This video is closed captioned in English and Spanish subtitles. Hello, travelers. Welcome, everybody. This is Anthony, also known as the Travel Droner. Here on this channel, we create videos discussing amazing travel facts and amazing destinations. Join us on our journey around the world by subscribing to our channel. Please click the bell icon to get notified when we publish a new video. In today's video, we're going to talk about space tourism and traveling to other planets as a tourist. When I used to study science, studying space was always a very interesting and fascinating thing to do in school. So I imagined how amazing it would be to travel to space one day when I grow up, to watch the limitless galaxy with my own eyes, and most importantly, to watch planet Earth from space. This is a dream I and many people have, and they would pay anything for a trip to space if money was not an issue. So in this video, we'll be discussing space tourism. What is happening right now? What could happen soon? How far we can go with it? And what the possibilities are for a regular human to become a space tourist? So, without further ado, let's start the video. So, first of all, let's talk about the history of space tourism. Space travel has always been about discoveries and research. It has never been anything about tourism and commercialization, at least not for NASA. NASA always has strongly opposed space tourism. The man who had the first steps on the moon, Neil Armstrong, was also known for discouraging space tourism. Still, some companies started to see a future market in this niche. And these companies and their approaches towards space tourism date back to the late 1990s. Mercorp was a private company that was in charge of a space station back then. And to cover their huge maintenance costs, they decided to visit the space station with some high-paying passengers. Denise Tito, an American businessman and former JPL scientist, were the first travelers. Tito was able to move his flight to the International Space Station, ISS, aboard a Russian Soyuz spacecraft when Mir was deorbited thanks to a deal between Mir Corp and U.S.-based space adventures. Lieutenant Dennis Tito became the world's first fee-paying space tourist when he spent seven days on the International Space Station in April through May of 2001. Tito reportedly paid $20 million for his trip. In April 2002, a South African, Mark Shuttleworth, was the second to tour space. Gregory Olson was the third space tourist in October of 2005. The space shuttle Columbia exploded on re-entry into Earth's atmosphere in February 2003, killing all seven astronauts on board. Following this catastrophe, space tourism on the Russian Soyuz project was briefly halted as Soyuz vehicles became the only means of access to the International Space Station. Space tourism resumed once the shuttle returned to operation in July 2005. Anusha Ansari, an Iranian-American businesswoman, became the fourth space tourist in September 2006. Charles Simoni, an American businessman, joined the space tourism bandwagon in April 2007. In March 2009, Simoni became the first repeat space tourist, paying to fly on Soyuz TMA-14 for the second time. Richard Garriott, a British-American, became the next space tourist in October 2008 on board at the Soyuz TMA-13 spacecraft. Guy Lelabete, a Canadian billionaire, was the most recent visitor to visit the ISS flying in September 2019 on Soyuz TMA-16. The British singer Sarah Brightman was supposed to be the third member aboard Soyuz TMA-18M as a space tourist, but she announced her withdrawal from training on May 13, 2015. The space shuttle shut down operation in 2011. Only a total of 244 people between astronauts and tourists have visited the ISS until April 2021. Now, let's say you want to be the next space tourist, as which companies are offering space tourism services now? Well, if you want to go to space, you need to go to SpaceX. This is a company that Elon Musk started. He was one of a few people who have been working on space tourism for many years, and he has a feeling that space tourism will get regularized just like normal air travel. Everyone considered his thoughts, approaches, missions, visions, and objectives baseless and filled with fantasy. His plans with SpaceX was even criticized by Neil Armstrong, who was completely against commercial space flights and space tourism. This broke Musk as Armstrong was an idol for him, and he was one of the persons he looked up to while working on SpaceX. Anyway, SpaceX is so huge that even NASA is collaborating with it now, and if you want to go into space and orbit the Earth, SpaceX has two tourist launches planned. 
The first private space tour is expected to happen in September 2021. The second one can happen in early 2022, most probably if things go well. Billionaire Jared Isaacman has sponsored the first launch, and the second launch will be organized by Axiom Space. But you have to be a multimillionaire or even a billionaire to consider this trip. This trip is so expensive, more expensive than world tour packages you can get here on Earth. A trip to outer space and a stay at the International Space Station would cost you a whopping $55 million. The new pricing policy charges $5.2 million per person for ISS crew time to support a private astronaut mission and $4.8 million per mission for integration and basic services, such as mission planning. The policy now charges between $88,000 and $164,000 per person per day for pre-staging food and other cargo on the station for those missions on NASA cargo vehicles and disposing cargo on those spacecraft. It also charges between $40 and $1,500 per person per day for crew supplies and $2,000 per person per day for food. This high cost has made many space enthusiasts take a step back from space tourism as this creates a massive divide between rich and poor. Other companies are planning to promote space tourism, and their space tourism packages are a lot cheaper than SpaceX. Blue Origins and Virgin Galactic are offering suborbital trips, and both are priced between $200,000 to $250,000, which is tiny compared to the mammoth $55 million fare for a SpaceX space tour. Now, these prices are very high. But still, because an unnamed individual offered the highest bid of $28 million for a ticket to space and a seat on the new Shepard, Blue Origin suborbital launch rocket, alongside the private space flight company's founder, Jeff Bezos, Blue Origin's online live auction for the ticket to space followed a two-week-long competition for the seat. The lucky winner will join Bezos and his brother Mark, plus another yet-to-be-named passenger, in a trip beyond Earth's atmosphere scheduled for launch on July 20. The prices that Virgin Galactic and Blue Origins are asking for are less than NASA charges. Plus, viewing the Earth from space is a priceless experience. But do remember that in the current phase of space tourism, the flights will have to be reserved at least a year before the actual launch. Well, Space Adventures and SpaceX have teamed together to take four customers into orbit around the Earth next year. Yusaka Meizawa, a Japanese billionaire, has booked a flight aboard SpaceX's Starship for 2023 and has invited eight other people to join him. So, as you can see, even for a legit space tour organized by SpaceX, the billionaire had to book his spot two years prior. In that time frame, the passengers will have their health checked regularly receive rigorous space training, and be told about the do's and don'ts while traveling to space. The dream for space tourism is quite far-fetched, as even the owner of SpaceX, Elon Musk, hasn't been to space yet. But it is being said that soon, Musk and the owner of e-commerce giant Amazon will be going to have a trip to space. But people who do not like Bezos are signing a petition to leave Bezos in space, as Earth doesn't need him, they say. This is a story that we will cover in another video soon. So, now that we know that a space trip in which the passengers will orbit planet Earth and visit and stay in the International Space Station is very much possible, and this will be normalized in the next 5 to 10 years. But what about Mars? Is a trip to Mars soon possible? Well, no. Right now, there are only rovers going around on Mars, and they are just sending pictures and videos of the Mars surface to give the people at NASA an idea about how the conditions are, and it will be safe to land on Mars. The first crew-based Mars mission is expected to happen in 2025, but this will just be the first step to Mars. doesn't mean that after humans will finally land on Mars for the very first time, it will be possible for normal rich tourists to tour Mars for fun and, well, exploration. We can expect tourism to Mars to happen at least 15 to 25 years from now. But if you want to orbit the Earth and stay on the space station, this is a million-dollar adventure that you can do if you have that kind of money. Me? I don't even have enough money to have a tour to Subway. So, if you see an ad, please don't skip it as it makes us go on a tour to Subway twice a month. 
The discovery of more distant worlds requires moon missions. After a long break, NASA is returning to the moon with a bold ambition to put a space station in lunar orbit within the next decade. However, the agency's Artemis program, which is a descendant of the Apollo missions of the 1960s and 70s, aims to land the first woman on the moon by 2024. Extended stays on the moon provide the knowledge and experience required for long-duration space flights to other planets. In addition, the moon might be used as a forward base of future missions from which people can learn how to renew key supplies like rocket fuel and oxygen using local materials. NASA is also inviting the support of the corporate sector to get to the moon. It's given three contracts to private firms researching on human-rated lunar rovers, such as Blue Origin and SpaceX. The core of the Artemis mission, however, is Orion, a new cutting-edge spaceship. Anyways, real life is quite different from Hollywood. Even though Hollywood has taken us to Mars multiple times and made it look easy to go even near the black hole, none of these things are easy to do, especially commercial space flights. Operations to Mars is a thing that we might see in the next 15 or even 25 years. So, no need to keep your hopes high for a potential trip to Mars. That's all for today. If you like this video, press the like button. Also, if you are new to this channel, please subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so that you can get updated whenever we post a video on any important updates. Till then, see ya.